so we have we have already seen uh, that if we have a nonlinear system that can be represented uh, as a feedback interconnection of a LTI system with a uh, uh, memoryless nonlinearity lying in the zero infinity sector, and if the LTI system is uh, strictly positive real, then the origin of the nonlinear system is going to be exponentially stable. And now we want to explore what other kind of uh, sector nonlinearities can we have, and what kind of conditions get imposed on the LTI system GS, so that the origin of the nonlinear system uh, is uh, exponentially stable. Okay, so the next sector nonlinearity or the next sector that will be assume uh, we will be seeing is the sector nonlinearity that we will consider for this discussion today is the k1 infinity uh, sector ok so this essentially would mean if the nonlinearity psi belongs to the k1 infinity sector this essentially means that um, the ratio of phi by xi will be something of this form where phi is the output of the nonlinearity and xi is the input of the nonlinearity okay this is how uh, the sector nonlinearity is defined. So, if we see it in the form of a rough sketch, if this is xi, this is phi, and suppose this is the line with a slope of k1, then the nonlinearity of possibly this form is going to be considered as a sector non uh, sector non entity in the sector k1 till infinity okay so it is basically this yellow region that you see here. This is the sector in which the nonlinearity is with the input output map or the input output map and the nonlinear map will essentially lie. Okay. Now, uh, in such a nonlinearity, observe that when xi is positive. Okay, so when you are seeing some point here and the corresponding phi would be what? The corresponding phi here would be this. We observe that this difference that we have is nothing but phi minus k1 xi. So this phi minus k1 xi for xi being positive is always positive. Similarly, if xi is less than 0, for example, if you consider this point, let us say xi2, the corresponding phi value is going to be this, which is phi2, and similarly, you see the difference between the straight line to the curve then this is also phi minus k1 xi and for a negative xi phi minus k1 xi is going to be negative okay so i am talking in terms of I mean, in this example what we have taken is that the sector uh, the nonlinearity that we are seeing is essentially a scalar form of one dimensional nonlinearity okay the input xi is uh, a one cross one vector and phi1 is also one cross one Okay. just to understand what 
this essentially means okay so in such non linearities in such non linearities what you essentially have is z transpose phi minus k1 z will be greater than equal to 0 okay i'll put this so this will be greater than equal to 0 right now suppose I say that psi tilde is a system such that it takes in xi and gives you the output phi minus k1 xi. Okay, so this relationship that you see here essentially is holding for this nonlinearity. Okay, so psi tilde is another nonlinearity so that such that if it takes in xi. It gives you output phi minus k1, okay, where phi is the output of the nonlinearity psi that we have, okay. So this xi transpose phi minus k1 psi being greater than equal to zero is essentially for this nonlinearity psi tilde, and this psi tilde is also a memoryless nonlinearity. So psi tilde is essentially passive. It's a passive system, right, and what is the range of, I mean, in which sector, to which sector uh, non-linearity set will this psi tilde belong to, right? So the input is this, output is this. So you can see here that psi tilde xi divided by the input xi itself is going to be in the range of 0 to infinity. Okay. So your psi tilde or the psi tilde nonlinearity is in the 0 infinity sector. Right. Now, how is psi tilde nonlinearity obtained from psi? So, to see this, what you have is xi going as an input to the nonlinearity psi that gives me an output phi. And you add a summer here, this goes as a plus sign, and then you have a block k1 that scales this xi and subtracts it from phi to give you phi minus k1 xi which is nothing but psi tilde xi. So what is psi tilde? Psi tilde is everything inside this dashed box this is your psi tilde nonlinearity where the input is xi and the output is phi minus k1 xi okay so we'll call this output as phi tilde okay so now what we have is this psi tilde nonlinearity as it belongs to the zero infinity sector so psi tilde is already a passive system okay so psi tilde belongs to this and we also showed that uh, this holds so now let's come back to the system that we had in hand the original system that we had in hand was basically an interconnection between a LTI system GS and a memoryless nonlinearity psi. This is what actually we had. You input u, output y, this is the input xi and output phi. Now, if I want to represent this such that 
one of the systems is psi tilde then i have to do some loop transformation and please note that when i do some loop transformation i mean uh, if i find a equivalent so uh, if i find a equivalent uh, system for this such that both of them essentially uh, are identical yet the transformation should be different and one of the um, feedback interconnected systems would be essentially psi tilde so that is what the objective is so i have to find another feedback interconnection with g1s some g1s as the lti system such that psi tilde is one of the feedback interconnected system okay so i have to find this equivalent system for the system that i already have in mind why because i have already shown that psi tilde is in the zero to infinity sector and psi tilde is a passive system so if i can find this equivalent representation then i would essentially need the g1s system to be strictly positive real and that would give me back a condition on gs okay so if i can find so i'll label this as system 1 that is the original system and i'll label this as system 2 that is the equivalent system if one can find system 2 that is equivalent to system 1 then with g1s being strictly positive real the origin of the autonomous nonlinear system will be asymptotically stiff okay so then the condition that g1s has to be strictly positive real will give me a condition on what gs has to be so now i know how psi and psi tilde are related i just have to find out how g and g1s have to be related okay so how do we do that so let's say that i have the system here and this is gs this is psi when i build the equivalent system i just have to ensure that the input to gs is u output of gs is y similarly input to psi is xi and the output of psi is phi this is what i have to answer if i can answer this much then i would have got a equivalent system in my hand okay now what is the change that we do in psi so that i get psi tilde what i did was i scaled up xi by a factor of k1 right i took xi scaled it up by a factor of k1 and then subtracted it from phi then the output that i get is essentially phi tilde so this system here 
that you see is my psi tilde non linear okay now what i do is i feed this as feedback if you notice in system 1 in system 1 u is equal to minus 5 and xi is equal to y okay so when i am building the equivalent system my u has to be minus 5 and my xi has to be y so given that my xi just connects to this so this line remains the same as we had in the first part now there would be some changes happening so what i have got here is phi tilde what i want here uh, to reach finally gs is minus 5 so how can i get it what i'll do is since y is same as z i'll take a feedback i'll take a feedback from y scale it up by a factor of k1 and then subtract it here this look at just the size i subtract it here and this is going to be your system so what happens is you get a minus phi tilde here minus phi tilde is uh, nothing but k1 xi minus phi now y and xi are same so with the minus k1 sign doing things around there what you essentially get is u equal to minus phi so that is what you needed u should be equal to minus phi and y is already equal to xi so you have a equivalent system in your hand so you observe here what we had done was for the non linearity we scaled up xi by a factor of k1 and fed it forward with a negative sense so for gs we do a similar thing except in the opposite direction so we took a feedback of y scaled it by a factor of k1 and gave a negative feedback into the uh, input so that finally u becomes equal to minus 5 so the equivalent system that we have here is essentially this oh my, my bad is this this is the equivalent system g1 of s that you have so what is g1 of s g1 of s is nothing but g of s the output of which is fed through a gain k1 and this so this is what g1 of s is so if i express g1 of s in terms of g what i have is g1 of s is nothing but g of s by 1 plus k1 g of s so this is what i have as how g1 of s is related to g okay and i need this expression to be strictly positive real and not the g to be strictly positive real i mean if g is strictly positive real of course uh, with uh, psi belonging to the uh, sector k1 to infinity it would have worked out but now this is allowing me to consider gs which are not strictly positive real 
I just need such GS such that the equivalent, uh, when we transform it into an equivalent system, the G1S needs to be strictly positive GS. So, the condition on GS gets relaxed when the sector nonlinearity is in the sector K2, when the nonlinearity is in the sector K2 infinity or the K1 to infinity. So, what we can write as a concluding statement for this finding is the following. When the memoryless nonlinearity psi belongs to the K1 infinity sector, then G of S need not be strictly positive real for the nonlinear system's origin to be asymptotically stable. So, this is one relaxation, relaxation, but G by 1 plus K1 G, this has to be strictly positive real. So that the origin of the nonlinear system. So when I say nonlinear system, it is the feedback interconnection. Okay, is asymptotically stable. Okay, so you notice here for when the nonlinearity is in the K one infinity sector. If G is also strictly positive real, then of course we uh, can have the origin of the nonlinear system to be asymptotically stable. But what this is trying to say is it need not be strictly positive real. So it allows you to bring in even more uh, transfer functions, uh, more linear time invariant systems into picture. So that such nonlinearities, nonlinearities in feedback can ensure that the nonlinear system is actually having an asymptotically stable origin. Okay. So, it imposes that G by 1 plus K1 G should be strictly positive here. Okay. Now, whatever we did here, okay, whatever action we took here to generate the uh, equivalent system, which were where G1 and the psi tilde were involved in the uh, feedback interconnection, all these that we have done is termed as the loop transformation okay? because you transform the entire feedback loop. Now we know that strictly positive real uh, systems are such that in case of a CISO linear time invariant system, we know that the strictly positive real system are such that the entire Nyquist plot uh, lies in the first and fourth quadrant strictly and does not contain any part of the imaginary axis of the GS plane and everything in the right half of the S plane is mapped into the interior of this uh, Nyquist plot. Okay, so this is what we know. So, we know the region where uh, such uh, the strictly positive real transfer function has to lie. Similarly, we will be able to identify from this strictly positive real condition itself, what is the reason in which GS must lie so that uh, such GS can be considered as systems that can be in feedback with the uh, nonlinearities in the K1 infinity sector so that they are stable. And please note, whatever we have seen here is for, I forgot to mention it right at the beginning. This is for K1 greater than 0, okay. The K1 being positive. So you see here we have a positive slope to start with. This is what our assumption was. So, uh, this is for the case when the sector, no, uh, sector is between K1 and infinity. Uh, in the next lecture, we will see a case where the sector is between 0 to K, uh, 0 to K2. Okay. 
and what is the condition that we again get so that uh, the feedback interconnection has a asymptotically stable origin. So we will stop here. Thank you.